Should we do like really ASMR style? Like, hey guys, today on TVC Tech, we're gonna be talking about how to find love. Hey guys, welcome to Orion Airspace. So on this episode of TVC Tech, we're gonna be talking about the flight computer and a little bit of the flight software. It's basically everything I've been working on for the past three months and working to refine as we try and remove the jankiness, as we've been saying, from our system. So the first two videos on our channel had the very first prototype system we built. It was uh, mainly Lego, TVC, and this really janky flight computer, um, which we nicknamed HAL. And basically it was just there as a proof of concept, and if we could do that and get that to sort of resemble thrust vectoring, then we'd take the next steps. Um, so this flight computer was super basic, it's just an IMU and an Arduino Nano, and two servo outputs, and a button that doesn't really work, but is on there because it looks cool. Um, and it worked well enough, it did what it needed to do, but we realized if we were going to actually get um, reliable flights, we'd need to change. So we decided, um, after a lot of thinking and a lot of research, um, to go with the Teensy 3.5 microcontroller. Um, it, one, has a built-in SD card slot, which has proved to be really handy because we don't need to do an external SD card breakout board, which, one, adds a lot of unnecessary mass, and also is just complicated. So another benefit is the Teensy 3.5 runs a lot faster. It runs at it can run, if you overclock it, at 170 megahertz, whereas the little Arduino Nano only runs at 16 megahertz. And that's really useful when you want to do things like quaternions and data filtering, and you also need to do a control algorithm. So it can just run through all of those things at like an incredibly high rate and just get through all the math really quickly. And what's nice is it can then keep up with the outputs to both our sensors. So that's also useful. Um, so yeah. And then obviously a lot had to change in the flight software. Um, we went from no control algorithm on the old flight computer. So if we arm the flight computer, you can see it'll enter its pad idle mode. So the LED will turn on once the IMU has been initialized and the pressure sensor has been initialized and the SD card is ready to write to. And then the LED, or the buzzer, is gonna be on when we're in the pad idle. So when Luke is arming the rocket, he can listen for that buzzer. And as long as he hears that buzzer, it means we're ready to fly and he can go and start the ignition sequence. Um, so yeah, so basically once that's ready to go and the rocket detects liftoff, that stops and it's thrust vectoring and it's logging all the data and basically doing all of the, you know, flight computer things that it needs to do, so it's running through all the orientation data, getting all that and converting it to the servo outputs. So, that's doing that. When we arm the flight computer, if it detects liftoff and pitches over, you can hear that high pitch noise. It means not good. It means the rocket's not doing rocket things, so everything's shut down. It closes the SD card, logs the last bits of data it can, um, and then it's basically done and hopefully your rocket has survived, but maybe it hasn't. It crashed, that's why it aborted. Because it crashed, or was crashing. So. so we're gonna run you guys over all of the components that go into the flight computer. Right here, at our power source, which is a nine volt battery. Heads into our terminal block. Uh, that terminal block, that takes the power through there, and has basically like a dead man switch, so nothing is powered on until this switch gets flipped and it does all its things. Um, so that switch then adds continuity to our voltage regulator, which is this guy right here. Um, it's just a little breakout board that contains a standard voltage regulator. So that regulates the voltage from the nine volt down to five volts um, throughout the entire system. So the TNC takes a five volt input, the BMP takes a five volt input, and the IMU takes a five volt input. So let's go over the TNC and see how he's doing. Here he is, just down here. Um, so the TNC 3.5. So the TNC 3.5 is going to take the input and it's in charge of sending all the outputs to the servos and receiving all the inputs from our sensors. Um, so speaking of sensors, we have a BMP 280, this guy right here, which just ticks in pressure um, and you can use that roughly to calculate altitude, which is what we'll be doing to calculate our apogee and maybe in the future when we do landings, winky face, um, we'll be using it for that. Then we have our MPU 6050, 
pretty standard. It seems like most people um, use these for their thrust vector control models um, or just any sort of orientation data on a model rocket because it's pretty cheap and it's really accurate and really reliable. Um, and if you know how to filter your data, then you have nothing to worry about really. So that guy is checking for angular acceleration, or sorry, angular velocity and acceleration, um, two separate things. Um, and so over here, you may have noticed, is our little servo. And this is for our mechanical shoot ejection. Over here, we have our little LED. This is our status LED. So this turns on when the flight computer is all ready to go. Um, pretty simple, it's just, it's just a light. Like you guys know what lights do, they just go on or off, right? Um, here, you'll notice there's an empty spot on the board. Basically what this guy is for is if we ever wanna do transmission. Um, we debated briefly about doing maybe Bluetooth communication, maybe doing live telemetry downlink, but we're not really sure at the moment. So it's just an empty slot since it's there. Um, we might put something on it, we might not, we haven't really decided yet, but it's there in case we want that future um, applicability. Then we have down here, this little X and Y indications for our TVC. Um, because, you know, the whole point of this is it does thrust vectoring. So those are your servo points. Pretty simple. You attach the servo to them, and the servo does whatever the flight computer tells it to. And then we got a little buzzer. Um, again, this just is to make beep boops, because we need to know what it's doing. And so that allows us to hear um, and make sure everything's going well. And that basically concludes our little journey. And yeah, make sure you subscribe um, because we're gonna have a lot more content coming soon as well as launches of the Spectre Advanced, which was having this and the new TVC and the mechanical shoot ejection all in one and it's gonna be super slick. So that launch will be coming out for you guys soon. Or maybe it'll already come out. It depends when this video gets edited, but maybe you've already seen it and maybe you'll know how it went because I don't, but you might. So that might be coming out. It may have come out. Who knows? Um, I don't know. But as always, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and uh, rockets out, as Hugh says. And now Luke will zoom into my face dramatically close, and I will do this.